Hi, Mr. Hafner here, and here's a short video on sound waves. Okay, sound waves are longitudinal pressure waves and moving energy disturbances that generally affect the auditory nerve. Light, on the other hand, is an electromagnetic disturbance that affects the optic nerve. So here we have, uh, for example, a speaker causing compressions and rare fractions, so high pressure and low pressure, and that works its way through the uh, air medium until it reaches your ear. Uh, eventually it will affect your uh, auditory nerve. In the auditory nerve you have these uh, cilia, these hair-like structures, which uh, vibrate or resonate at different uh, frequencies and send electrical signals to the brain. Uh, where light, on the other hand, uh, is an electromagnetic disturbance. So we have a uh, plus, minus, north, south disturbance. Reaches your eye, and then inside the, uh, the retina here we've got different cells, photocells, which can detect um, light intensity, which are called rods, so it's like grayscale. And then you've got your red, green, and blue cones. So the primary uh, colors of light are red, green, and blue, not yellow. Sound waves are audible to humans uh, if they're between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz, with the uh, minimum intensity of zero decibels, which is around 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter. Uh, similarly, humans see frequencies between uh, 430 and 770 terahertz, but uh, really it's unknown what the amount of minimum intensity is. It's hard to, hard to say. So, sound waves. If they're inaudible, you can't hear them. If they're below 20 hertz, so you can't hear them, they're called infrasonic. If they're above 20,000 hertz, they're ultrasonic and you can't hear them. But they're quite useful at that point. We use them for... Um, doing ultrasounds in medicine, and uh, infrasonic, they've determined, actually can have, uh, uh, can be a problem, can cause you to feel ill, and uh, unfortunately, I think they do use these for crowd control now, sometimes. Uh, for um, electromagnetic, you can't see it, it's invisible. If it's below red, infrared, you can't see it, and if it's above violet, you can't see it either, that's ultraviolet. So, different organisms can hear or detect different frequencies. For example, uh, dogs can hear double what humans hear. So for example, a human can hear uh, anything from 20 to 20,000 hertz, or a dog can hear from 15 to 50,000 hertz. A um, bat can hear from 1,000 to 120,000, which is pretty impressive. And a porpoise uh, can hear anything from 150 to 150,000. If you go down and take a look at the moth, the moth doesn't really hear, but it does detect sound of 3,000 hertz to 150,000 hertz. And then, of course, different uh, sources make different uh, ranges of, uh, of frequencies. For example, stereo can make sounds anywhere from 15 to 30,000 hertz. So definitely uh, make sure it can make frequencies that humans can hear. Or human beings usually talk between 85 and 1,100 hertz. Uh, dogs can bark at like 452 to 1080 hertz, etc. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, if the moth is wrecking your clothes, uh, can it hear it if you yell at it? Probably not, because most humans uh, kind of max out close to about 1100 hertz, and moths don't even hear anything until you hit 3000. And why are dogs above 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz? That's because um, above 20,000 we can't hear it, but the dogs do. So that's why we use dog whistles in that frequency. So whatever you do, don't blow a dog whistle really loudly near a dog. Okay, that that's, might be painful. Okay. Sound intensity is often measured in decibels. The threshold of human hearing is uh, 0 decibels, or 10 to the negative 12 hertz. So the way it works like this, you had uh, 0 decibels, or 0 bells, it's 10 to the negative 12. If you add 10 decibels, that's adding 1 bell. And that's multiplying your your, uh, power, your intensity by power of 10. So it goes from 10 to the negative 12 to 10 to the negative 11. The um, average whisper when you're whispering to somebody is around 20 decibels, or 10 to the negative 10 uh, watts per square meter. Uh, Two-person conversation is uh, approximately a thousand times more than a whisper. Uh, so that's 60 decibels, or 6 bells, or 10 to the negative 6. Uh, watts per square meter. Um, something loud would be 90 decibels or 9 uh, bells or 0 0.001 watts per square meter. So just 1,000th of a watt per square meter. And eventually, uh, 
pain occurs at 130 decibels, or 13 bells, or 10 watts per square meter. So now we're at uh, 10, 10 trillion times what the threshold is. And uh, eventually at 160 decibels, your eardrums burst if they perforate. And that's very, very loud. To calculate your decibels, all you do is um, find the power, divide by the threshold power, which is 10 to the negative 12. You take the logarithm of that value, multiply by 10, and you've got your decibels. It's pretty amazing. Uh, the sound is 1 billion times more intense. Um, sorry, a loud sound is about a billion times more intense than a, than a loud of a sound. Uh, painful sounds are 10 trillion times more intense than just barely audible. And conversations are like a thousand or more uh, intense than a whisper. <clears throat> Oddly, on a stereo, the sound intensity is controlled by a, a volume knob instead of an intensity knob or knob. So the intensity you compare using the logarithm math. So for example, if you want to compare a, uh, a quiet washing machine to a loud one, um, you can do some similar math to this. So here we have this uh, 42 decibel washing machine. It's pretty quiet. And then we have this other one over here, which is 57 decibels. How much louder is the 57 decibels? So first thing we're going to do is use the decibel formula and find out um, what the intensity is for the uh, for the quiet machine. So we got 42 equals 10 log bracket p over 10 to the negative 12. First thing you do is do 42 divided by 10, which is 4.2. And then you uh, do the inverse of log, which is uh, 10 to the power of something. So we need 10 to the power of 4.2. And then we're going to multiply that answer by 10 to the negative 12, and we're going to get our power. So the uh, 42 decibels is 1.585 times 10 to the negative 8 watts per square meter. Uh, could have put the square meter there. Uh, so now we'll do the same thing for the other uh, for the other washing machine. And I showed a couple more steps just in case here. And overall, we get a, an intensity of 5.012 times 10 to the negative 7 watts per square meter. So now just to find out how much louder one is than the other, just take the big number, divide by the small number, and we find the uh, the other washing machine is 31.6 times louder than the old one, almost 32 times louder. You can use the same kind of math when you're calculating differences in pH levels in chemistry class, or when you're comparing um, earthquakes um, in the Richter scale. Same kind of math. So sound, noise, and music. If a tree falls in a forest and no one is nearby to hear it, it doesn't make a sound, it doesn't make a noise, it doesn't make music. That's a very famous philosophical question. Well, a sound can stimulate the auditory nerve, and a noise is unpleasant, uh, is an unpleasant sound with no repeating pattern, it has dissonance. And music requires consonance, which has usually repeating patterns of superpositions of waves, and it's pleasant to hear. So here we got a tree falling in a forest. Is really no one there? I, I guess maybe at least there's some like worms or bugs around anyway. Uh, so this is what consonance looks like. You got all these superimposed waves and they have a nice little pattern to them. So this would be something that might be pleasant to, the, to hear. Where dissonance, you have sharp changes, no real repeating patterns. It's, it's not going to sound very nice. In summary, sound waves are detectable by the auditory nerve. Uh, different organisms can detect different ranges of frequencies and levels of intensity. A sound is audible if it can be detected. Infrasonic and ultrasonic sounds are inaudible, can't be detected. And it's also true for sounds below zero decibels for human beings. If a sound is pleasant to hear, it may be music. Music requires consonants, which is, requires repeating patterns. And noise, on the other hand, is unpleasant to hear and requires dissonance. Oddly, some people consider some music to be noise. So, for example, uh, if you're listening to the Beatles, you might like them. Someone else might be saying, hey, what is that noise? So I hope this uh, video has been useful. Uh, good luck with your study in physics.